Hey everyone, so I wanted to do a video about global climate change, but I realized that I'm probably going to have to split this into a couple of different videos, because it would take 30 minutes, and who wants to watch a 30 minute long video of me talking, right? Alright, so I'm splitting it into a couple of different ones, and the first one we're going to talk about is how does the greenhouse effect work? So the greenhouse effect is what is heating up basically the entire planet. What's really interesting is that they say that 98% of the greenhouse gases are coming from just natural sources, or 98% of the heating on Earth is coming from natural sources, like the greenhouse effect. And only 2% is coming from you know human sources and stuff like that. So we talked about the greenhouse effect, and I've got a fun picture down here at the bottom that'll kind of explain it that way as well. Alright, so what happens is, is the sun is emitting all kinds of electromagnetic radiation. And when I say electromagnetic radiation, I've got ultraviolet, I've got infrared, it's emitting some other stuff. About one-third of it is going to be reflected back out into space. You know, it hits the Earth's atmosphere, and then it's just reflected back out. But two-thirds of it is actually going to come into Earth's atmosphere, and that's what's actually, you know, heating up the Earth. All right, when the rays hit the surface, water, or whatever, what they're going to do is, is they're going to lose a tiny bit of energy. And as they lose a tiny bit of energy, they turn from being ultraviolet rays into being infrared rays. So ultraviolet, it has more energy, and then there's visible light underneath that, and then there's the infrared. We're all emitting infrared light, or infrared energy, because we're warm-blooded animals. Alright, so whenever they hit something, and they lose a little bit of energy, they bounce back up, and these things called greenhouse gases actually trap them. And greenhouse gases uh, trap heat, and they re-radiate them from one thing to another. So it's kind of like the, the greenhouse gases, they... They trap the heat, and then they move it to another greenhouse gas, and that gas, you know, the whole process is heating up things. So here are some examples of greenhouse gases, all right? So uh, the most common one is actually water vapor, which is H2O, which is really strange to think about. And the reason people don't usually talk about this when they talk about global climate change is because, you know, it doesn't have a really long resonance time in the atmosphere. All right, the next one that's most common uh, is carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is, I'm breathing it out right now, you are too. Um, literally everything that is respiring is putting off CO2. Methane is CH4, so CH4 is uh, natural gas as well. Uh, ruminants, termites, when I say ruminants, I mean things like cows, goats, stuff like that. Things that have more than one stomach are putting off this methane from uh, flatulence, which is a fun word to say something else. All right, nitrous oxides are N2O. These are created in what they call a reducing environment, like a swamp or something like that, and they're created from, from N2, just normal. All right, so I've already said this. The most common greenhouse gas is water vapor, or H2O. It doesn't have a long residence time in the atmosphere. It's condensed back into clouds and stuff like that. Uh, and then we have to talk about the one that I didn't list up here. And the reason I didn't list it up here is because this is chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs. That is the, uh, really the only greenhouse gas that is, was exclusively created by humans. Uh, CFCs have the greatest greenhouse warming potential. So uh, greenhouse warming potential, or global warming potential, is this definition down here. It's how much a gas can heat up the planet relative to carbon dioxide. So they gave CO2 a 1% and then they compared everything else to carbon dioxide and CFCs have a global warming potential or a greenhouse warming potential in the thousands as compared to CO2. So if you remember chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs, they were outlawed in the Montreal Protocol so no one is really using CFCs anymore um, but one reason why the chlorine is still up in the atmosphere is because it's just so persistent. And it, we stopped using them in like the, you know, late 80s, early 90s, but still there's some chlorine up there that's, you know, heating up the planet. So here's this fun little picture that I've drawn for you to kind of show you uh, basically what's happening here. So this is the ground down here. This is some water. And I, I had some uh, color choices. So this is grass here. And the sun is putting out these UV rays. So these UV rays, they hit the, you know, the soil, or they hit the water, and they bounce back up. There are all these greenhouse gases here, which are trapping the heat. So CO2, CO2, there's some CFCs right there, watch out. CO2, CO2, so I just drew in some, some greenhouse gases. 
And again, remember, the greenhouse gases are invisible. I just drew them in so that you could see them. All right, so the greenhouse ga gases, they trap the infrared heat from the sun, and that's how our planet warms up. So what people are really concerned about with global climate change is that we're emitting too many greenhouse gases. So when I say we, I mean humans. Uh, most commonly, it's CO2. All right, so where are all these greenhouse gases coming from, you might ask. All right, there are two different sources of greenhouse gases. There are natural sources, and then there are anthropogenic or human sources. All right, so here's some natural sources of greenhouse gases. All right, volcanoes, livestock, swamps. Uh, you may be surprised to know that termites are actually emitting a ton of methane, which is very odd. Uh, forest fires are emitting CO2, and then liquid water is just evaporating from literally any body of water. All right, so uh, you probably need to know a few uh, natural sources of greenhouse gases. All right, so we've got volcanoes that are emitting carbon dioxide and particulates. The particulates can actually cool down the planet. So remember we talked about how, you know, the meteor hit the earth when the dinosaurs went extinct and they put all the ash and particulates up into the air and all the particulates basically blocked out the sun. All right, so particulates can actually cool down the planet. All right, then with livestock, uh, we've got methane and carbon dioxide. So methane is being produced from them, uh, their flatulence or them uh, passing gas, if you will. And they're also emitting carbon dioxide because they are respiring. They're burning glucose for energy. Termites are emitting methane, and there's a there was an FRQ a couple of years ago about how termites are emitting large amounts of methane. Uh, forest fires are also emitting CO2, uh, and then swamps are emitting things like methane, nitrous oxide, just because it's a reducing environment. They don't have access to oxygen. All right, and then we've got anthropogenic sources, which are down here. So these anthropogenic sources are basically human sources. And the number one thing is uh, burning fossil fuels. So if you don't know what fossil fuels are, fossil fuels include like coal, natural gas, uh, kerosene, oil. Uh, there's a ton of different ones, and we'll talk more about those when we talk about energy. Uh, humans respiring, they're producing CO2, and there's just so many humans. Um, we're approaching, what is it, like 8 billion people on Earth. So there's just tons of humans, and they're all breathing out CO2. All right, deforestation. Deforestation is when you cut down giant you know, tracts of forest, and usually the forests are sucking in large amounts of CO2, and since we cut down the forest, they can't do that anymore. Landfills are really interesting as well because the CO2 that's in there is actually being converted in the reducing environment, or they don't have access to oxygen, so CO2 is being converted into methane. And then the industrial chemicals like CFCs. All right, so here are the anthropogenic sources of uh, greenhouse gases. So we've got burning fossil fuels that's going to emit carbon dioxide. It's also going to emit water vapor, but you know the water vapor we don't really have to worry about because it has such a short residence time. Humans respiring is releasing, releasing carbon dioxide. That's also releasing uh, water vapor as well. Deforestation, it removes trees which soak in carbon dioxide. Landfills again are producing methane. And then the industrial chemicals, the chlorofluorocarbons that we created back in you know 50s and 60s, and we try to replace the chlorofluorocarbons with hydrochlorofluorocarbons, um, but those were, come to find out, those are giant greenhouse, uh, they're heating up the atmosphere, they're greenhouse gases. Alright, so if you have any questions about sources of greenhouse gases, please let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video.